So in another video, we talked about how a budget constraint will change if there is a, a change in income. It's shifted, shifted out. I want to now talk about how that change in income may affect the decision of consumers to buy different combinations of the goods. So I've got an example up here where we've got some level of income that is divided up between the, the amount of purchases on food, the, amount, the value of purchases on clothing, and we've got these initial prices of uh, $10 per unit of clothing and $20 per unit of food and $1,000 of income. Now, if these consumers only bought food with their $1,000 and it cost $20 per unit of F, they could purchase as much as 50 units. Or with their $1,000 of income, they could buy 100 units of clothing. Now, oftentimes, when you have, you know, you have the choice of food or clothing, you probably want both. So we're, we're assuming that they do indeed want both of these goods. So the, the choice will be somewhere on this budget constraint where they consume some of both goods. And I want to depict that initial situation where we have an indifference curve that's tangent and we've got an amount of F that's purchased and we've got an amount of C that's purchased where they're maximizing um, their utility subject to this budget constraint. And if you recall, what we have is the marginal utility of X over the marginal utility of Y is equal to PX over PY. That's where the, this, this indifference curve is tangent. So we can't measure marginal utility directly, but we can, if you're willing to pay twice as much for, the, for X, then you must be getting twice as much benefit. So we can, we can talk about marginal utility as a, as, a, um, as a ratio between each other, certainly. Anyway, so that's the, uh, here's the depiction of the initial situation with the initial level of, of income. Let's say that income goes up to $2,000. Prices remain the same, but you've got higher income. That budget constraint will expand. So let's depict that. So we've got, with the same set of prices, we could now purchase 100 F or 200 units of C or some combination in between. Now, so we've gotten higher income, we've got the same prices. What is that, how does that change our uh, choice of which of the two goods, you know, what, what combination of the two goods to, uh, to purchase? Well, let me just pick one. Okay, I've just drawn this uh, more or less arbitrarily, but with a particular feature in mind. We have higher income, the prices remain the same, income goes up, I buy more of both goods. With a higher level of income, I want more food, and I want more clothing, okay? So this point right here is greater than the original food choice. This point right here is greater than the original clothing choice. I have increased the consumption of both goods as income has, has risen. That is an example 
of what we call a normal good. Now there's a, a separate video about the, elast the income elasticity of demand and you'll see that they, uh, this is exactly what we were talking about there. As you increase income, you purchase more of both goods. That elasticity of demand, uh, of income, so income elasticity of demand is greater than zero. We buy more of both goods. Well, it doesn't, it's not necessarily that way. I mean, maybe I've just drawn this particular uh, indifference curve. It may be, maybe consumer preferences are different. Maybe consumer tastes are different so that as I get more income, I actually consume less clothing. I buy more food. Buy more food and less clothing. Relative prices remain the same, income goes up, and in this instance, I will, with this increase in income, I will move away from clothing in this example. That's a case where clothing would be an inferior good. And if we did the calculation of the income elasticity of demand, we would see that for food, in this case, more income results in less or fewer purchases of that product. In this case, indeed, food is a normal good. As you increase income, you buy more of it. Okay, so F remains a um, a normal good in that in, in that instance. As we increase income, we change the combination of the of the two goods. Now, if we were talking about this in a supply or a, in a demand curve context, what you would be talking about is how you know, what happens to um, demand for a good if income changes and prices remain the same? If it's an inferior good and income goes up, you actually consume less. In any event, so this is, this is where we start to evaluate how income changes the optimal choice of consumption. One final thing. There's a bit of terminology that we will introduce here of something called the income expansion path. How is it that, or what, what are the, how does income changes, what happens to the combination of of choices of these two goods. So imagine that I draw a whole bunch of different income levels, holding prices constant, okay? Because that should be parallel shifts because income is going, going up. If the, so let's imagine that at relatively low levels of income, you consume more of both. As income starts to go up, you start to consume less C, and that combination of the two, let me do this in a different color, in this case, this income expansion path starts to potentially bend backwards. In fact, 
it could be the case that if we increase income enough, that clothing becomes an inferior good. As the income re reaches a high enough level, you start to actually buy less of it. So the reason I, I mention this is that the, the, in, the income elasticity of demand can change at the level of income. And if you look at the, def, the definition of that in, a, in the other video, you'll see that the, um, the definition of uh, the income elasticity very much depends on the, the particular combinations of, of, um, of, um, of income and demand. And as those change, as those increase, you can have a move from a normal to an inferior good.